presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. We do, but not working. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to figure out why. I am unsure. Uh, what else do we have going on today? Well, of course, uh, the rally continues unabated. I thought maybe we'd get a little bit of pullback before we push back higher. 28.77 and a half on the S&P cash. That's up 20, or excuse me, 34 uh, points on the S&P. The Dow's up 291. NASDAQ up 133. The Russell's up almost 14, 13.76. Of course, uh, one of the big movers out here today uh, in the movers and shakers is the dollar. Mr. Dollar is uh, down a uh, almost uh, 51 cents, 96.488 is the last tick I show. And, of course, uh, pretty much came off of uh, the uh, around 70, or excuse me, 97.05, uh, right with the jobs numbers at 8.30. So uh, seeing a little bit of that. And, of course, the market feeling pretty good that that uh, heroin of low interest rates is not going away, that IV drip that this keeps going, uh, but uh, eh, you never know. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it, but uh, uh, let's see. If I can't launch this again and see if it doesn't work here or if it's work not working for another reason, and then we'll get to it here, but uh, we shall see. The following takes place between 2 p.m and 3 p.m. Yeah, we got it working now. So uh, you never know. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll be with Tom O'Brien at 3.30 for the Tech Insider half hour uh, to wrap up the week. Um, other than that, been a pretty good day. I took some cash off the table today in one of our trades. Maybe we'll get to talking about that. Uh, it's just one of those so when you can, not when you have to things. And, uh, you know, you get a little bit, to, it, there is a little bit of uh, the uh, three bears, you know. You get the one that's, the porridge that's just too cool, and then the porridge that's just right, and then the porridge that's way too hot. And uh, you get way too hot, and the old saying is, the, the light bulb that burns twice as bright only burns half as long. Certainly a nice move off the lows, so we took some cash. Um, for the Tech Insider folks, uh, we made kind of an ETF out of a sector. And uh, eh, last I looked at, it was up around uh, on the three stocks that we had, about 10% on the day. So a good day there and uh, getting confirmation in one of the other long-term trades today, closing back above a significant level. So uh, we bought the dips, and uh, at least in the daytime, we're selling the rips. And the long-term, eh, Looks so good, you got to wear shades. Oh, I love that song, but uh, we won't move on. Uh, give me a call today at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. But uh, been a good day, been a good week. And uh, as long as you're on the right side of a trade here, it's always been a good week. But uh, why don't we start a little history, and then we will move on, little doggies. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1962, the banking institution Credit Suisse, now known uh, known as something that I can't pronounce, opens up the first drive through bank in Switzerland at St. Peterstrasse 17 near something, Paradise Square. Uh, Parade Square in downtown Zurich. I've been there. I just uh, never spent a lot of time learning the language. If you go to Switzerland, one of the things that you'll realize is it is a tri-country. 
Uh, they speak Fran uh, French down by France. They speak German over by Germany. They speak uh, uh, English and uh, they, you just in Italian over by uh, Italy. So it's one of those things where, depending on where you are at, you'd think, well, you know, they speak, you know, the, the language of Switzerland. Well, eh, it's a mishmash, and it depends on where you are. Uh, the uh, they had, used to have, or probably still do, have a convention for a video production in Montreux, Switzerland. And, of course, you always heard about everybody going there uh, that was in the rich and the famous and the jet setters. To be going there in the mid-'90s after hearing about, you know, uh, James Bond kind of stuff going on in Switzerland. It was kind of interesting. Uh, no air conditioning there, by the way, and hotter than Hades come midsummer. I was ready to also, you can't get hotel rooms. And I was stuck with a guy that literally sounded like a chainsaw going off all night. So I couldn't sleep. So I made sure he didn't sleep. By the end of the week, we both wanted to choke each other. I said, I don't mind sharing a room with somebody, but just make sure it's not with chainsaw here because I didn't sleep for four or five days. Uh, the only good thing that came out of it uh, that week was that uh, when I went to catch my plane back, which was Swiss Air, by the way, um, they left two hours early. <laughs> what plane leaves two hours early? Uh, apparently they do there uh, when they feel, I don't know what, why. So I, I called up uh, and made a tersely uh, uh, email, not email, uh, voicemail uh, to the uh, folks. And by the time... I got to England, uh, or the UK, the only plane they had back was a seat for, actually for the next day and a half, was a seat on the Concorde, and uh, they rigged it. That was the second ride on the Concorde I got. Uh, <laughs> yep, well, you think about taking Latin, and it never helps you when you go to Latin America. Uh, you know, I never understood that part either. Uh, anyway, uh, as we uh, as we start off the show here, as I said, volume wasn't very good yesterday. It ended up being a little bit better. Uh, down again today, uh, 3.9 billion shares as we start the show on the CBOE uh, consolidated tape. Uh, so we're probably going to get some kind of pullback in this market, I would imagine, maybe on Monday. Uh, I did do the options. Uh, curves and start doing it. And of course, they really start to show you something uh, about the 12th. So we're about three days away from going delta neutral for those guys. And maybe it'll tell us a little bit more. But uh, I think, uh, as we've said before, um, it's kind of telling to, to find out what the option market makers think about the market. And uh, we'll talk about that when we come back. Uh, from the break, but uh, make sure and give me a call, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we said uh, earlier, uh, we'll look at the volumes here on the NASDAQ. Uh, then we got a couple of emails coming in that we want to answer to. Uh, but uh, as you can see, since we got to the low, uh, almost 2.58 billion shares for the NASDAQ on uh, June 3rd, we've gone up for a handful of days. Volume really hasn't increased. You generally want to give about three days. But what we're in now is the Great Wall of China, where all these gaps, which are there are actually four of them, right at the level that we're at. So you probably ought to think that maximum dynamic pressure for upward pricing probably is about exactly where we're at right now. Kind of pinned it just a little bit, 77.67 uh, earlier in the day, and we're just a little off that. But if you're watching here, in fact, I'll zoom in a little bit better. You can see all these gaps shown in the art of timing the trade charts um, pretty clearly, and that's exactly what we're going back into right now. Uh, another one out here is BYND. BYND from Lonnie. Uh, da, 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 da. And the question is, uh, what are we going to do with BYND? Well, I wouldn't do anything to beyond me. Um, ridiculous uh, accessions aside, I tell you what you want to do is because I'm going to talk about Tom O'Brien. Uh, today with it. In fact, I'm probably going to lead off with it. Uh, I've been writing about it in the Tech Insider for a few weeks. Uh, but there's uh, there's something out there called the hype cycle. And maybe that's a great thing to talk about today uh, in the BYND. But uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get into it with Tom. In fact, I'll, I'll change that to the first thing we talk about at 3.30. Uh, but these uh, IPO cycles, um, are not uncommon. And in fact, one of the uh, recent uh, big runners that we had, well, big winners we had last year, we had to get out of. And that was because the hype actually got just too much for it. And generally, you know that they're way overpriced. Uh, and what you have to do is wait for them to come back for you. A lot of times it may take a year that took us a long time to get back into the ones that made us a ton of money 
in the Tech Insider, actually, they were close to one. One was 100% winner in, what, four or five months or something. So there are some of these stocks out there, but when they have big runs like that, uh, slow and steady kind of wins the race. If you get a huge amount of money uh, in something like this Beyond Meat thing, you got to watch it. But uh, we'll go through that hype cycle because I think it's a definitely a teachable moment. We'll bring it up in connection with Beyond Meat. Doesn't mean that the stock's going lower uh, immediately, but it tells you historically what is more than likely. And uh, we'll do that at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien. Uh, what else do we have out here? Da -da -da, bonds. Okay. Yes, I watched all that D-Day footage uh, last night. Quite amazing. Let's see what else we have here. Um, rig count down nine. Not surprisingly, we're starting to see that. That's in the United States. Canada, though, was plus 18 for the Baker Hughes numbers. So we continue to see Canada going after the rig count. Uh, much harder than the U.S. I think some of these things were down for uh, hurricane preparedness for the U.S. But every time the, the uh, price comes down, a lot of those offshore rigs don't become economic anymore, and they're pulled back in the last uh, couple of weeks of downside pressure on oil has certainly uh, brought that rig count down. We're still at 975 here in the United States. But uh, Canada, uh, plus 18, gives you a little bit of an idea what's going on. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what else do we have going on here today? Okay. I'm not washing my clothes. Deck and cider, just making sure we have all these. I uh, had a question uh, come in earlier. I said I'd answer it on the air, and that was Tesla. Um, we had uh, what, somebody call it, was it Tuesday? Uh, if you'd hold your options into Wednesday or into Friday, and I said yesterday, I probably would have sold, in, uh, sold them yesterday. Got basically repeat action of exactly what you had yesterday. But that 210 area, is exactly where this gap down happened, uh, and you had a lot of volume. Well, yeah, I actually had multiple gap downs. Um, now, going forward, there's still enough short interest to get this thing back up to 240, but my guess is it's going to have to consolidate out for a while to the sideways before you get any more of it. But uh, congratulations on buying the calls on that. Uh, I think he bought them when it was around 190, bought the 200s, and it went to 210. So. Uh, a good trade, but yeah, lots of short sellers in that. Uh, to, to, to what else do we want to take a look at so far? Um, certainly in volume, the NYSE has looked better than the NASDAQ, uh, but on the same point there, as we're getting back into previous highs, we're going to be a little bit light. You wanted about uh, 3.6 billion shares uh, as we got to this level to go back to the volume of May 10th, uh, we've got about 2.7 billion now. So maybe you get 3.1, maybe 3.2 on a Friday, but that's still kind of stretching it. I don't think that we're going to bounce for uh, a few days. I think we've got some sideways action and in probably into that options expiration on Wednesday. And in fact, we were going to bring that up and I didn't because Somewhere along the line, I uh, lost my icon, and now I've got a sneeze, so hang on a minute. I better turn my microphone back on now. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? To, 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 what is it? Uh, Ben? Debug. I gotta find my. There we go. We'll bring this up here. Do I have time? I got about a minute and a half. I think maybe I do. This thing will actually come back, pop back up. There it is. I get rid of those for a second. Um, wanted to get to what option market makers were actually saying, uh, and uh, hopefully we got it here. Um, again, so far they are staying way out of what's happening. So they don't have an abiding belief uh, of what's going to happen, at least in the spies. 
And that's been pretty accurate the last three months. Uh, but, you know, unless this thing uh, really gets above three, the spies get above 300, uh, or they go below uh, about uh, 235, um, this thing's pretty flat. There's about $25 million difference uh, from win and lose for those option market makers. But generally, you know, this thing's kind of a nice little V every month or maybe three out of the four months, gives you a good idea that people aren't expecting a wide range. But uh, anything from heaven to hell, but not that much more heaven, and uh, always worried about the giant blowout to the downside, there just isn't that much money for option market makers to lose if this thing goes south. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, I got a question about what I sold, and it was the IYT, which is the uh, transports. We bought it uh, at uh, like 176 and change, if I remember right. Uh, got out today, um, put the order out when it was around 184. And one of the things that uh, with uh, 500,000 shares, uh, we got about 158,000 now. It uh, doesn't mean that it can't get up to 187, 188 or something. Uh, but my guess is that, you know, 
I, I end this show every day with the same thing, and that is uh, so when you can, not when you have to. So if this thing brought pulled back about 180, which I think it can, um, then maybe I get an opportunity to buy it again. But um, you make a lot of money real quick, uh, and a lot of the stuff that we're playing with, eh, you want to take some money. You don't make any money until you uh, take that money. Uh, it's all an example. I uh, had uh, some more emails here um, a little yesterday and today, and I wanted to talk about this. I didn't get it um, uh, yesterday, but I want to, I'll go ahead and do it now because we've got some time. Um, but um, let me get it up here. Um, we were talking about how I'm starting to think a little differently about make, making long term predictions in the stock market. Um, yesterday, we talked about what I learned from the godfather of uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence. I call it machine learning. He does, too. I think it's a much better description of it. Uh, but you want to kind of trade like you're driving in fog, and that is uh, you don't want to get too, uh, too into the idea that you can uh, drive off the other person's uh, taillights in front of you. That's how you get 40 car pileups uh, out on the highway. And so you just kind of know that maybe somebody's up there, but you don't need to be closing in on them. You need to make reasonable uh, uh, I, um, calls. Uh, but there's a great part in uh, a uh, speech at MIT that the author of Jurassic Park and so many other uh, great novels, uh, and he's a producer, a real Renaissance man, uh, Michael Crichton. Um, but uh, in 2000, I think it was 2003, he gave the speech at MIT, and it was a lot about what people thought about uh, global warming, but making predictions. And this was probably the best way, and he's a great author, and I'm not, so I, I want to just this little part about what you know and what you think you don't know. Uh, but then he put this. Remember, people in 1900 didn't know what an atom was. They didn't know what its structure was. They also didn't know what a radio was or an airport or a movie or a television or a computer or a cell phone or a jet, an antibiotic, a rocket, a scientist, uh, a satellite, an MRI, an ICU, an IUD, what IBM was, an IRA, an ERA, an EEG, an EPA, an IRS, a DOD, a PCP, an HTML or Internet, or interferon, instant replay, remote sensing, remote control, speed dialing, gene therapy, gene splicing, genes at all, spot welding, heat seeking, bipolar, Prozac, leotards, lap dancing, emails, tape recorders, CDs, airbags, plastic explosive, plastic in general, robots, cars, liposuction, transduction, superconduction, disc antennas, step aerobics, smoothies, 12 steps, programs, ultrasound, nylon, raylon, Teflon, uh, fiber optics, carpal tunnel syndrome, laser surgery, uh, corneal transfer, uh, transplants, uh, kidney transplants, AIDS. None of this would have meant a one thing to a person in the 1900s. And uh, I'll finish this thought up with a quote about predicting the future. The greatest obstacle to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. We should know that there are stuff that we do not know. Unfortunately, I think far too many long-term predictions fail because they do assume that everything is going to stay the way it is. And uh, if there's anything that we know is that discoveries, new, uh, new ideas uh, tend to breed, and they tend to breed bigger and faster as time goes along. Progress is not slowing. It tends to be just uh, running along at a breakneck pace that will not stop. So I think I can look a couple of years ahead. I don't think I can look five or 10 years ahead, maybe five if I'm lucky. Uh, but uh, you know what? You just kind of set down that path and you go down it as long as you can in the markets and you move ahead. Um, quick question about uh, Microsoft. I haven't looked at it today. Uh, getting back up to this level, but again, not a lot of juice. 
You needed 38 million shares today. You're in it with about 24 million shares so far today. Take a quick peek at Amazon. Uh, it's back up into this gap that uh, had some decent volume. You're doing a little bit better than one would think. 1805.78 for the high in Amazon today. NFLX, uh, nice little pop. Uh, and you know, you're just back in Netflix into this big uh, candle. Uh, what is that? Inverted hammer? Hammer time? Uh, back from the 22nd of May, that had 6.3 million shares. Today, you got 3.4 million shares so far. So you know what? You had a, a huge run. You've had it in a matter of a few days. And now you're tipping off uh, back into previous highs on very light volume, and that's where you uh, start to kind of uh, hanging out over the edge of the building. Always makes me a little nervous. But uh, why I say sell when you can, not when you have to, is I can buy fairly well at the lows and know that I'm, I've got fairly good risk reward. At the highs, it's hard to tell because everybody's playing a game of chicken and thinking that, yeah, I can buy it and sell it for just another dollar higher. And there's always a bigger fool, as we have found out uh, at the beginning of May. That isn't always the way it works out. I uh, got more emails here. What do I think of IBM's laying off 2,000 people? Well, <laughs> they've been laying off people for the last five, 10 years, haven't they? Uh, again, I don't think, you know, you got your bounce off the low. But long term, I think there are a lot better plays out here. Um, their uh, ability uh, to make money in quantum computing is basically what they're betting the company on. And, you know, it's tough when you're in this kind of business uh, and a legacy provider like International Business Machine uh, to bet your future on a single outcome. They've done it. If, if there's a company that can do it, it's IBM. They've done it four times before over the last hundred years. Uh, but again, eventually one of those days, your luck runs out. They tried to get into machine learning, uh, and uh, a lot of people cut them off at the pass. Uh, and uh, now it's down to quantum computing and high-speed computing. And I don't know if they can make it either. Too much of a gamble for me. I wouldn't short them, but I wouldn't be long either. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Um, just keeping a close eye here on the volume, see if it picks up at all. We got four point and a little about four point two billion shares, and that's with about an hour and twenty minutes left in the trading day. Of course, you get a little of that back ended, but I'm going to say six point three billion shares, which is going to be fairly significant uh, in giving a signal. I su uh, I suspect uh, that I will have a bunch of stocks that have tested uh, previous highs on light volume or gaps. Uh, we'll go through those on Monday. But again, uh, you've got kind of a bullish bias going into options expiration. That starts on Wednesday. So if, I, I, if you're thinking about probably pulling the ripcord and going short, I think you're probably looking after the 21st. Um, but uh, we'll know a lot more about how the options close in the next couple of days. But uh, for what I'm doing, I'm kind of pulling back uh, on the, the stocks that I made some big money on or made good money on, let me put it that way. And uh, we'll look uh, for any of these stocks that pull back with light volume and get ready to start ABCs on the way back up. As the uh, last couple of weeks I've said, I've, I've, I've been rather uh, at least sanguine on the downside and if not outright bullish, um, optimistic. Uh, on the markets and on the economy as a whole. Uh, we've kind of pulled back a little bit on the on the um, jobs numbers. But again, this is exactly where, uh, if you're the president of the United States, you have some uh, ability to manipulate the markets. What you want to do is get all the excess out before the last year into the voting booth. And so we're, what about, about what, 14? 16 months out, 16 months, is that right? And let's say 14 months, 15 months. Uh, you want to get everything wrung out of the market. You want to get the people that shouldn't be in certain places with their cash out of it and into places that actually are going to make money and, and move the market higher and everything else. Um, one of the other things that's uh, been on my mind for a while, we've talked about it a little bit, is the idea of sector rotation. And again, you know, you've had some very long runs in Microsoft and Amazon and the rest of these. Most of them, or at least some of them, are going to go up against federal trade uh, uh, issues uh, in the coming um, months. And I, I just remembered that I want to say it's June 4th of 2001. Maybe it was July 4th in 2001 when Microsoft uh, had its antitrust regulation come out. Uh, and the thing, you know, for a big cap, you just don't expect big caps to drop 30 or 25% in a day on what they're doing. Now, of course, within about a year, that had all been uh, moved aside. But at the same time, as a trader, if you're getting into a, a stock, the market's already looking rather south. Or you want to want to hold on to it for the next 10 years until you show a profit. And that is where the tough part is. I suspect that not only uh, Amazon, but uh, uh, Facebook and the rest. To note, it's one of those things where you say news doesn't really matter until it matters. 
I think we're getting fairly close to the point where it truly matters for uh, companies like Facebook. Uh, the articles uh, are fairly damning, uh, and um, a lot of these uh, cases have been kind of settled. Uh, at least uh, what branch of the government is going to go after these guys. Uh, in Facebook's case, it's Federal Trade Commission. And that's just, it's kind of like an onion. Um, you know, I mean, these guys pretty much lied to Congress. So there's not, you know, once they get past some of the more horrific things they did with your personal data and lied to you about it, it's going to be them lying to Congress and everything else. The question is just how far is that going to go? The issue with Microsoft was pretty straightforward. Uh, were they uh, destroying the market by uh, putting their own browser in it? That was pretty simple, straightforward. This is almost pervasive, like a, uh, a RICO case, in how many different ways that you'll be able to go after it. Let's see what the uh, Mao Zuckerberg stock is doing today. I forgot to do that. Uh, eh, it's up a little bit, yeah, but you, of course you came off the 198 down to 160.84. Uh, I got uh, some emails asking me to think about this for a while, and you, 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 you know, if there's a stock that looks fairly horrible out here on the bounce, it, it's certainly Facebook. You had this huge down day with 56 million shares. You're up on 12 million shares back into that, the high on that. Uh, Mike in Toronto, how you doing, Mike? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? Yep. Yeah, hi. Well, look at Semafo, the gold stock in Africa. S E M F F. Okay, I don't have uh, I don't have access to that right now. What's your question on it? Uh, just the technical charts. It it's, uh, seems to be breaking out. I just thought you might know something about it. No, but I wouldn't be long any South African gold stocks. It's not South Africa. It's uh, Central Africa. The second, okay, the second one is Sandstorm Gold, ticker symbol S-A-N-D. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, what do you think and, of it? Well, you went back up to resistance. You needed about 2 million shares. You got uh, a little over 2 million shares. You got 1.9, so it's not bad. Um, are you long this already? I'm watching it. Well, you know, you probably would like to, if you wanted to get long this thing, about $5.35. We want to see this big candle from the 31st. Uh, you right. want to see it go in there and give, uh, you know, try support, have no volume, and close back higher. But I'd... You know, if I was watching this, five dollars and thirty-five cents would be the place where there would be some de decent risk reward. Um, I don't know a lot about the the uh, gold stocks. I wanted to go back to that a second, but um, this, at least in my opinion, uh, in South Africa, they're killing farmers right now, white farmers, to take their land. And you know, it's not going to be any different than all the other. Uh, countries out there that have decided to kind of go that way in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. I would just be very careful about having anything in South Africa. In South Africa, uh, yeah. Investments in yeah, South Africa. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. Um, I, next, I, okay. But that stands from, could you go back to the, all the way back to 2012 on that chart? Yeah. What, what do you think? Do you think uh, it's, it's got a low volume high from 2012? I mean, Realistically, what price, what pivot point would you look at for a, a confirmed breakout? Well, you need to see the mar uh, the gold market itself kind of break out here, and you're still in a bigger trading range. Uh -huh. So that would be the first thing until you see a real break above it. Let's see. Let's get the current pricing out here on gold. Okay, up five dollars and eighty cents at thirteen forty eight fifty. You're kind of close, but you want to see a sign of strength as it breaks above this level. Uh, that probably would get you 769 on Sandstorm Gold if you get it, if you get gold moving. 769. Okay, thank yep. you. We'll be back in a minute and wrap the show up.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of tfnn.com and sign up today catch tom o'brien professional trader and educator founder of tfnn also a special guest on cnbc tom will bisect and dissect the markets the tom o'brien show next on tfnn And we're back uh, getting ready to wrap up the show again. Uh, light volume, we're back up into some gaps. Uh, we've got uh, kind of the wind up for options expiration uh, with uh, Delta Neutral Day next Wednesday. It's kind of a nice month and you do have a lot of time. So I'm going to say uh, you want to keep a kind of a close eye on this. Uh, market makers are expecting maybe a little bit higher and probably. Um, you know, a 50% or 70% chance of a little bit higher, uh, but very worried about taking any kind of risk to the downside. Uh, in uh, the den, we have a question about what do I make of F, uh, Federal Express and UPS and some of these other uh, uh, transport companies. And I'm going to say that for the greatest extent, this downside uh, is a couple things. One, and, and probably the major one, Amazon getting into the business. These guys were making huge amounts of cash transporting Amazon's stuff around, and now Amazon's doing it directly. Now, the good news, if you want to be patient with these companies, and that is wait for these things to come around, that antitrust is probably going to get rid of the vertical company uh, and their ability to transport and deliver their own goods. That's probably the easiest thing for the government to go in and shut down for Amazon. But in the meantime, next probably couple of years, it's going to be tough. 
FedEx uh, is having to go to seven days, so is UPS in delivery. Uh, these are unionized companies, and it's very expensive for them. If you see the little white vans uh, around uh, delivering your Amazon packages, those are local jobbers. Uh, they got no uh, medical, no union, nothing. And that is what FedEx and UPS are, is competing with. I don't see a, a real bright star in the horizon for any of these distribution companies up against uh, Amazon until they get uh, their hands slapped by the government. I'll catch me at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien. So when you can, not when you have to. See you Monday, same bat channel, same bat time.